but he points her finger and they get at you and they say, you're a do-gooder. Right? Just another do-gooder, aren't you? And I've got something in mind. Maybe you have too. He was loud, he was confrontational, quite apparently rendered slightly irrational and reasonable by a consuming hatred. And he was being all of those things right in my face. Do good at. Well, of course, we want to say we're not. Because, uh, because where we stand as believers is that we're do badders, right? We don't naturally do good, we do things we shouldn't do. We make mistakes, we cross the line, we kick back our own sinful human nature leads us into things that we think afterwards we shouldn't have been anywhere near. And our statement about ourselves will probably be, no, we're not do good as we are what we call sinners. But God has been good to us. And whereas we're not what we ought to be, thank God by his grace we're not what we were. And yet you've still got this problem of somebody accusing you of being a do-gooder. But do you know what is it we want, what is it we want to be? What else would you rationally want to be? What else would you recommend I should be? But when you come to a point where doing good is something you feel justified in attacking, then something may well have gone wrong deep inside you, surely, to be attacking doing good. So perhaps my personal critic wanted a different vocabulary, perhaps feeling criticised, although he wasn't being criticised, I was trying to help, but perhaps suffering um, a guilty conscience, imagining he was being cri criticised by my presence or something, he might have wanted to accuse me of hypocrisy or something. That might have been better. To try and address his own feelings about himself, probably. Don't know. But that would be another matter. And he'd be on more of a winner if he was going to accuse me of hypocrisy, wouldn't he? Because to some extent all of us are not going to come claim sinless perfection. But to accuse or attack a person for doing good can only ever be an unwise, imprecise use of language or a matter of putting yourself on the opposite side of the, to the angels, one or the other. Either you are not using language very sensibly or you're putting yourself on the opposite side to what we might call being on the side of the angels. Why? Because fundamentally God is good. God is the one who is good. And being with him surely should make that rub off on you, though imperfectly. So any time we're talking about good and being good, we're not claiming that we are. We're stating that which we aspire to. When did you last hear a sermon on being good? It's dangerous, isn't it? Without those provisos that we don't be good by nature. Without the proviso that God is what good is what God is, rather. And we see goodness in him. And being with him, you grow in personal goodness as the fruit of the Spirit, which is what Galatians 5.22 is saying. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Because fundamentally and essentially the God who is the biggest personal influence on the Christian's life is himself the essence of all that is good. So spending time with him, it rubs off. It comes out as the fruit of his indwelling spirit that he puts into his people because that's what the spirit that he's put in us is like as has been the case for all these other things we've been looking at. It is the Christian's experience of God that God has put his spirit in your heart, in my heart, and what comes out of that is that bits of him get grown in us. And so much of the difficulty we have in reaching a lost world for the God who is good is that we as his people are not. Because they expect us to be perfectly like him, when we aspire to that <coughs> and when that's the direction we're growing in but we're not perfectly like that some of that perception arises in our relativistic world because that God's people are not good 
arises because God, good is being differently defined these days. <coughs> that which is good is being defined differently. Mm -hmm. But this particular fruit of the Spirit, the Christian experience of being given it by God, is something that needs to be addressed because God's glory is tied up in it and Christian mission is tied up in it too. Some of this arises because we are not yet good. But we are a lot better by his grace than we were before this process started. Mm 